Yeah, he's in a, he's yeah. in a nice jacket and stuff. No. Yeah, but you got the right hair, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I meant to pick it, but... <laughs> so, hi. Uh, I'm Tanya Tyler with Countertrace. Uh, we were the ones that uh, put together the solution for iPro Monitor Cast. And uh, this is the access control. They've got all kinds of integrations with the CCTV camera systems and all kinds of stuff. So maybe we, if we want to talk about any of that, we can. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll let uh, this is Tad with iPro. Are doing I know nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Mike. Uh, Mike Gray, uh, product engineering team lead for America. And then uh, Ed here, he's our sub uh, that we use SPC. for installation. Yeah. So if you have any installation questions, he looks like the bodyguard, I'm just yeah. saying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For her, yeah. <laughs> Do you mind if I tell you who's in the room? So you know oh, yes, most likely, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Trevor over here in the corner, raise your hand. He's our tech director, technology director. Stephen back here running the camera. He's our technology manager, enterprise manager. Um, Jeff uh, Van Winkle. Here on the end, that is over security um, on our tech team, security and telecom. And then we've got John, who's our network engineer, and BJ up here, one of our technicians. They'll all be pretty hands on with the, with the system. And then Steve, over here uh, against the wall, that's with maintenance, and he'll be uh, on the maintenance side, and yeah. we'll deal with a lot of the doors and access. Keys for the key so. keeper. <laughs> I think it's good, Kevin. I'm really, really sorry. I did that when I was in the army a couple of times. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. it is. Yeah. We will have a, a we have a, a new safety and security director that's been hired, but he hasn't started yet. He really has the same in all of this as well. We just don't have him yet. <laughs> soon. 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 Well, cool. Well, all right. We'll start off. We appreciate. You the invite and the opportunity to be able to show you what iPro and with our solution that we can do. So we call it Monitor Cast, which he's got shown up here. It's a, um, all the technology comes out of Houston. Everything's done in Houston for, for this side of it. Um, I'm gonna be really honest with you. I hate access control because it's boring. <laughs> All we're doing is opening and closing doors, right? We're controlling who goes in. It's like, woo, -woo. nothing really exciting happens. I'm a big fan of access control. But he's a big fan of it. <laughs> I think access control is a big part, right? Because it allows you to control and lock your building. You don't have to go around now with the, the lovely little keys and all that stuff. So we are a totally web client, uh, admin software, all this stuff. Uh, we do integrate with our video platform, and this access control can act as a standalone. Um, so, like I said, you can do, you can create your own dashboards, what you want, you know, based on user, you, can, you know, each user can make their dashboards, and Mike will get into that a little bit more that way, and, you know, if you got questions, you can always just shoot them out, so, um, it is uh, Mercury-based, which is an open platform, a lot of other manufacturers uses that, which allows us with your district, because I understand you guys are using Genetech, correct? Mm -hmm. They are Linnell, I mean not Linnell, they use Mercury boards also, so that allows us to be able to pull those boards into our system at a, a license, one-time license fee. Um, and we don't charge any recurring fees, and if when Tanya buys the boards from us and everything, there is no door licensing. So, and as we improve the software, you get that included also. So there is no recurring cost for a district. So the model of what iPro has really done with both platforms is really designed it around a budget conscious entity, schools, right? You can't always keep throwing money into your budget and you know you get fixed budgets and all that stuff. And you know you got recurring fees, licensing fees and all that stuff. You just throw that money away. We take it and say, well keep throwing it in there use it to enhance and grow and put more stuff in, you know, so, but you don't just throw it away for support. The nice thing about our support is you can call in. So Tanya can call in, you guys can call Tanya, Tanya can call us, you guys can call our tech support and they will actually help and remote in if they necessary to help you uh, troubleshoot that. Hours, so, what are their hours? Hours? Yeah. Uh, the hours are, it's 27, it's 7 a.m. to 
I believe 7 p.m. Uh, Central Time, but we do have 24 hour support. So if something goes bad at night over a weekend, over a holiday, there are guys that have cell phones that will answer for you. So, and that's all done out of Houston. So, so we're not second farming that off. I know we're doing some other stuff with another entity for IT support and all that, but um, it's all done out of Houston. So all of our tech support is based on Houston, Texas. So, so if you guys ever want a road trip down to Houston, I know a place you can go. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's pretty much the high level of the, the whole thing. Um, yeah. Unless I miss something. No, no, no. Okay. So, yeah. I'll, I'll go into the nuts and bolts and everything. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, on the back side, we're running a piece of software called um, Access or Monitor Cast. Um, it's going to run as a service on your server, uh, Windows based. Uh, it works on, based off of a SQL Server. So, everything we're writing is getting saved in SQL Server. Um, all your persistent information, card holders, doors. Uh, schedules, uh, holiday schedules, elevators. Uh, we just recently, on Monday, released a new version of the software that's got intrusion detection on it. So you, if you want to wire up uh, your glass breaks, mo uh, motion sensors, all those things, we can take and have those in there. You can take something like an MRDT, the little keypad that everybody has in their house for their alarm, um, or something like an RPK40 or keypad reader like we have on here. Uh, you can be able to punch in your, key, or your PIN number, also the code to deactivate, say, all your exterior uh, motion sensors. We'll mask those and unmask those. Um, I don't have that in this version. Just I got this kit late, so I didn't get a chance to update it. But that is there. And if it's something that you're interested in, let me know. We'll get you guys some documentation for it. Um, but it is web-based as far as the front end. So what you'll see, it's available from any machine that can reach the, the, the machine that access or monitor cast is running on. Um, you'll just go to port 8080. It's configurable. If you guys don't like 8080 or something else is already using 8080, can go into IIS Manager, change it to whatever you need it to be. Um, once you log in, you're going to land on the, the uh, dashboard. Dashboard is really here to kind of pull all the information you might need into one spot quickly, uh, how many alarms you might have across the system. Uh, we can also go through and clear those alarms out. Um, if you click on an alarm that was generated by the system, uh, so the door held open when we first open it comes up on here. Um, if your SOP says every alarm needs to have a corrective action to it, I can check the box for it, type it in. And then hit acknowledge and to clear that alarm out of the system. Um, so you can go back and then later on when we go into reports, we can go back and see where that actually was. We can see what that corrective action was as well. Uh, then in the middle, we can see a snapshot of what our system looks like right now. We're just really looking at a system that's comprised of a reader. Um, I don't have any monitor points wired up as well as a control point. Monitor points are going to be things that you want to see what the status is. We're going to be using a simple two-wire uh, contact. So if you're looking at uh, maybe you have some doors that are interior doors that you don't want to necessarily put a reader on, but you want to still be able to know is that door open or is that door closed. Uh, tool rooms, usually tool rooms are the big one I find. Uh, that people don't want to want you have to swipe in and swipe out, but I really want to know was that door open when it was it closed. Uh, we can track something like that with a monitor point. Um, and then control points are going to be things that you want to control. Uh, I see a lot of people wire up sounders. If you want to go through later on and do tests on your sounders, maybe um, annually you have to go through all your sounders, make sure they all function properly. Uh, we can take and trigger an individual control point manually. You can go down your walkie-talkie, say, hey, I'm standing at sounder number one. Can you go ahead and send it? They can fire off sounder number one. Hey, it's working. You can mark it off, move on to the next one. Uh, top right, we're seeing the last event that happened at the reader, so the last person to swipe a badge, whether they got access granted or access denied, it's going to populate here. You can see general information about that person as well. Uh, then down towards the bottom is where you're going to see all your different events. Uh, you can create event filters as well. Uh, so if you're looking to filter these, um, I really don't like seeing things like necessarily TAMP or secure, things like these. These are the system working normally. I don't want to see these because this is, this is okay. Maybe I really just want to see when I get alarms, when I get people that swipe through that aren't supposed to be going swiping through. Um, I can create a filter that really hones down to what I want. Um, you can create multiple filters and apply them as you need them. Uh, to create a filter, you can click on the plus sign, give it a name, what user should it apply to, and then what information would you like. Um, and then down at the bottom, you can choose your specific readers, or we can group readers together. Um, if you're interested in maybe saying all my high school exterior readers, I want to group all those together for control easily. 
uh, instead of a death by a thousand clicks. Um, or you can do reader monitor points and control points as well. We can also group those together. Uh, so if I want to mask or unmask them in mass, uh, maybe the, the Pepsi guy's coming in today, it's Tuesday, and he's refilling all the machines. Do they still have Pepsi machines in the stores? Mm -hmm. They can't sell Pepsi. We're a Coke district. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, I gotta stop then. <laughs> but, uh, but okay, the Coke, deal, the Coke vendor's coming in to refill all the machines. You know what? I want to mask the door that he's coming in because I know he's got a profit open. Uh, so that way there, we're not generating erroneous alarms. Um, so this is a really great way that you can take and filter down to find exactly what you want. And Mike, uh, when you were talking about the, the wired up the doors that aren't ones that were necessarily monitored, yes, so uh, one of those things, uh, do you recommend like a door sensor on that? Or Because we, we had an issue over at the, at the high school where kids are like taping or, or putting magnets over the top yep. or something. Is there a way to monitor the, the latch itself? Or do you recommend we do so? Because we, we have hardware solutions to that as well. But how do you, what's your best practice for monitoring that so we get alerted? So in monitor, the way that I found is, is that if you, if you use one specific solution, it's only one specific way to defeat it. So if you guys have ways that you're looking at that you've identified that work, we can figure out how to get those in here to work also. Um, or if you want to take and bracket it and use a camera, we, uh, some of our cameras like these cameras that have AI built into them, uh, we have an extension software set where you could take and point it at the door, box out the top part of the door, and then it can detect if the door is open or closed. And then you can say if the door is open for greater than a minute, sure. then go ahead and generate an alarm. So we could look at it as doing something like that. I'm, I'm a firm believer of taking and layering what your things are. That way there, it's harder for it to be defeated. Lots of people are gonna miss a piece of tape or a magnet. Um, it's really hard to miss if somebody takes like a big piece of wood and sticks it up over the top. <coughs> um, so th that would probably be the way that I would, I would take it. And whoever wrote all those questions that we got sent, thank you. Yep. I think those were one of the first times I've gotten like questions, not, <laughs> How do I do this? <laughs> like they're actually, they were thought provoking questions. Um, and I'll work on getting, actually, you mind bringing those up so I don't miss any? Um, you know, we don't need it now, but at the yeah, end, I don't cool miss one. any. Um, are, are there any questions about filtering? Um, and then we can create custom dashboards, um, much like Tad was talking about, what custom dashboards are gonna allow you to do is create a dashboard that's more in line with what you want to see. Uh, so you can take these panels um, across the top. You can kick out a panel if you want to add more. These are all able to be toggled and moved around, so you can kind of lay them out how you want. If there are specific filters that you'd like to have applied, you can apply it. Uh, maybe you want to have one that shows access granted and one that shows Another one here that shows all my, um, maybe these will be access denies, or if you're worried about somebody maybe trying to penetrate through a reader by just grabbing a whole stack of cards and just continually trying to swipe across until they find one that works. Um, you could create the dashboard to be whatever it is that you would like to see. Uh, so this is a really nice feature, especially since maybe the regular dashboard shows stuff that you don't necessarily want to see, or uh, maybe it doesn't show in a way you really like. Um, and then at the bottom, we have door management. Um, this is where we're going to be able to come in and keep track of the system, do things with the system. Um, this is where I can see reader groups and interact with them. Um, also, my individual readers. Um, and then down at the bottom, we have a different group of buttons that let you do things. You can admit, unlock. Um, we also have two different types of lockdowns that we can do, lockdown and lockdown with no recs. Um, so what we found talking to some, mostly it was hospitals, was that people were coming in and uh, just grabbing a whole bunch of opioids off of uh, at the pharmacy and they would just run out the door because they knew with the lockdown the wrecks was still there they could just hit the crash bar and keep right on running. Um, so working with them we developed lockdown with no wrecks that was really designed for very specific uses very specific time frames where we could lock down the system we want to keep people in the spot that they are uh, so it's there for you um, also if you create individual users all of this is tailorable so if you're looking at maybe a secretary, I don't really necessarily maybe want to have a secretary be able to take it on lock the door. I really just want to pare them down to just, just admit. We can tear, tailor this down to be whatever it is you need, and I'll show you guys that towards the end. Uh, we can also go up at the top and look at mask management. Um, this is where we're going to be able to take the monitor points that I don't have any set up. 
and be able to interact with them and mask or unmask. Um, I worked with a school in Pennsylvania. But what they had was is during construction time, if one of the exterior doors was open, they wanted a sounder to go off, and then in VI, our, v, our VMS platform, a live window pop up to come up on the secretary's desk. Um, so what we, and then in between periods, what they wanted was the students were allowed to leave and come back in, so we would mask the uh, door position switches at that time, and then we would take and unmask them whenever, uh, whenever it was instructional period. So that's something that we can also look at doing, that we've also accomplished. Um, and then control point management um, is where we can come in and look at your individual control points. Um, again, this is where we can come in and fire off those sounders or other pieces if you have them for testing or if you need to fire them off. Uh, we can send single pulses or repeated pulse, whatever uh, you guys need. Or maybe if you guys have a, a, a gated area for all of your uh, vehicles and you want to be able to trigger the gate, uh, the gate opener, you can trigger it through here manually. <coughs> Um, actually, that was one of the questions you guys had. So we can do that through here. We can also do it through a control point. Um, or if you want to layer what they have to do, um, if you have doors where maybe they have a handicap button, now we can take and wire the handicap button through a control point. Uh, when they when an act, a valid card is swiped, then it closes that control point, and then when they hit the, the handicap button, then the door will actually open for them. Um, otherwise, if they just walk up and hit the handicap button, nothing happens. Let's see, for hardware, uh, we have a, a, a couple of different things you can do on hardware. Um, Anti-passback, I don't think I've ever seen anti-passback happen in a school. Um, if you want to have it where I swipe, my badge won't work for five more minutes, so that way there I can't swipe it, hand it to the guy behind me, they swipe through, keep going. Um, or if you guys want to do flow control, um, where if I have, to, I have to come through that door, and I have to go out that door before I can come back through that door. Um, if you guys want to do flow control like that, or, um, Limit the amount of people that you have. That sparks a whole bunch of ideas. Uh, if you want to do limit for peak personnel, if this room is only supposed to have 15 people, we can create an anti passback region. Say this is an input reader, this is an outbound reader, 15 people. When the 16th person swipes, they get access tonight because we've already exceeded the number of people. Um, or if you're doing super secret school stuff, we can also do uh, two people, where two people have to stay in the room at the, all together. Uh, so that's another great feature we have. Um, card formatting, I'll just talk about. I won't show you it. If you guys have card formatting, I think if you've done anything with access control, you know card formats. Um, control point groups is where we're going to be able to group control points. Um, elevators, you guys have elevators? Mm -hmm. uh, we can create elevators. If you want to take and create it where you have the reader on the outside, they have to swipe a specific badge in order to get the door to open, then they can go up to the next floor. Um, or if you want to have it where their card, the reader's on the inside, they swipe, and they swipe only the floors that they have access to. Uh, we can set it up that way as well. Hey, yes, sir. So when somebody gets access to that, the door doesn't tell you why, though? No. Okay. Uh, on the display, it will, but the door won't. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So you won't know that there's 50 people there. You're just getting denied. Denied. Yes, sir. Because <laughs> I like to watch people get mad at can on camera. <laughs> Uh, hardware config, so this will be where we actually come in and set up your systems, um, is under hardware config. Uh, we use a tree uh, layout for it, so on your left hand side, you can create different sites. Um, for school districts, usually I'd recommend taking and creating one site for each school or one, one building. Uh, that way there you have a little bit more granular control. Also later on when you're taking and permissioning things out, um, the principal at the high school can only see the stuff at the high school. The principal at the middle school, only the middle school. Uh, we can take it and layer it that way as well. Uh, so to create a new site, you just type in a name, give it a description. Um, if I take and expand out, I can see all the different hardware bits that comprise an individual system. I can see uh, from my LP1501 that's on there, the subcontroller board. Also, if I had any other pieces tied to it, an MR52, MR16 in or out board, um, all those pieces would fall underneath it as well, um, along with all their individual pieces. Um, if I click on the reader, see the individual bits that make up the reader, um, my door contact. Um, here's where I can come in and also look at some other pieces like debounce time. Um, I don't know if you guys have the problem that everybody in access control has with loose doors, where they bounce like this, create a whole bunch of alarms. 
Wow, you guys are like the first people I've ever <laughs> Based met. Based on our HVAC. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, like where the door just kind of rattles enough that causes a whole bunch of false alarms. Um, if you if you ever do have that, we can set up a debounce time to say it has to be so long before it triggers an alarm. Um, sensor hold time, how long does it have to be open before it's triggered an alarm? Or, um, I'm sorry. Sensor hold time is going to be a, a delay before it triggers the alarm. So if you want to say they can open the door and shut it again, we can set that up. Um, for the yeah, for your actual reader, though, uh, we, we do a, a couple of different things we can let you do. You can give it a specific name, um, whatever you'd like it to be. Um, is it a single reader or is it a paired reader? Um, do you have a reader on both sides of the door? I have to swipe in, I have to swipe out. Um, what your default mode is, and then also what your offline mode is. Um, offline mode is if you have a contractor that's working up in the ceiling and accidentally cuts the RS-485 cable running to a um, that is running to say what your sub controllers, what should the controller do since it can't talk back? Or the, what should that reader do since it can't talk back to the sub? Uh, but the specific pieces I want to look at are under advanced. Um, this is where we can also set up how you want your system to work. Um, so one of the questions you guys had was what was the most secure access communication protocol. for the access control protocol? Uh, OSDP is a new standard for it. It's the new um, higher security versus weekend. Uh, depending on what reader you have, it'll support OSDP or it won't. Um, if it's a HID reader, they often sell a little Bluetooth uh, OSDP module you may be able to plug into the back. Um, and we can we can determine if that is or isn't there. Um, if not, we can just stick with the standard we get. Yeah, so on that side of it, we explain that a little bit. So with our hardware, and like, you know, so you got HID, you've got Slag, you've got all these other door hardware stuff. We fully are open to all that platform. So except for those guys that are very proprietary, right? So like there's some some other manufacturers that only get their own reader made and it's proprietary. Those, they block them down, we can't do that. But any open source, you got AWID, you got HID, uh, Wave, there's another company here that does the same thing. It's a, you know, we, we integrate with all those access control components. So very open source and we do do the the you know most current standard and then it, you know like in your older schools if you're using Wigan, you know like we can still bring you can still use Wigan and OSDP together. So we do I already do that at uh, 27J. You know they use LP 1501s everywhere just because they want to, which is okay, great. But you know they put them in and they do all that stuff, so they can do both OSD on the new schools and then if they have something that fails. It, they can just keep their door hardware in place, which is weakened, and they can keep that going forward. So, and I think the new readers do both protocols. So if you have yeah. an old, uh, old weakened card, it'll work on an OSDP reader. So, sorry. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> oh, and then one other question that you guys had submitted was about ripping out everything you had and replacing it with a standard. I highly recommend not doing that. It is insanely difficult right now to get anything with the word mercury on it. So if it works, keep it. Um, if, as long as we, if we'll support it, which is EP 1501s, LP 1501s, um, all that same series stuff, we'll probably flash the firmware back to mercury and we'll be good. Uh, we'll be able to pick right up and use it. Um, so, but yeah, if you don't, if it's not broke, let's not get rid of it. I yeah. always use it to flash the firmware and do that from the location. <laughs> how, how am I managing that? So what you'll end up doing is, is adding the you'll add the controller into monitor cast first then you go into the monitor cast onto the server itself monitor cast software there is a tool that will flash the firmware for you so don't have to do it find it quicker done yeah uh, two minutes maybe sure uh, the same thing if you want to upgrade the firmware on the controllers as well uh, you find it in there select the uh, firmware package you want to upload and it'll take care of it all um, the last thing I'll show you um, under the advanced settings um, is uh, our hold times. Uh, so these are all right out of the Mercury board, um, but the big one is ADA, so we are ADA compliant. If you have somebody that uh, breaks their leg and has a little trolley and needs more time to get through, uh, cane, crutches, walker, uh, we can take and set this up to whatever you guys think is appropriate for what you guys need. Um, and then in the personnel page, we can specify with a checkbox if ADA settings should apply to that person. Hardware discovery, nope, not hardware discovery. That one's pretty obvious what it does. Hardware status, um, real great place for you to be able to look at your system, be able to see how things look. 
um, as far as what site it is, what controller, what subcontroller, and then is it locked, unlocked, and then is the door open or closed. Um, and then if it's in an alarm state, what alarm state is it? Okay, so access levels. Um, so access levels are we're gonna create objects that we can permission out to individual cardholders. Uh, this is where we're gonna take and bind uh, schedules, which I'm gonna talk about next, to uh, specific readers. Uh, so I can give it a name, choose a basic schedule, what schedule would I like, and then what readers or reader groups should I have. It's fully customizable. Yeah. yeah, so this way here, um, you can overlap if you wanna have multiple readers part of multiple access levels, that's fine. Um, so you can have one, say, for your janitorial staff. If you're a janitor, you get janitorial access level. If you are um, on the education board, here's the education board one. Uh, principal, if you're in the uh, admin at the high school, you get this one. Right? Uh, and when I get into the personnel page, I'll show you how you guys apply those. Um, schedules, uh, advanced schedule um, is gonna be for things that you know are happening in advance. Uh, so you guys have a basketball game coming up on Friday. We can create an advanced schedule for it so that we know the doors are doing what you want them to without somebody having to manually go out there and take care of it. Um, another great one, uh, I saw a guy, uh, one, one place use it for uh, doing their conference room. They had access control in their conference room. They would take and set it up so that the door automatically unlocked 15, they set it up in there 15 minutes before the meeting and then when the meeting was supposed to be over so the door automatically opened and or unlocked and locked what it was supposed to be before the uh, Your basic schedule. Um, so this is gonna create something that we can permission out <coughs> to an access level or to a specific door. Um, you can put in the specific date time, the specific start and end times you're looking for, what dates it should apply to, um, holiday masking. So uh, that way there you can say, should this apply to holidays or not? Uh, if so that way there we see on Thanksgiving Thursday that the doors shouldn't unlock. Or maybe you have maybe you have some people that are supposed to still work on Thanksgiving at your um, operations center. That way there we can say this one should still work even though we have a holiday set up for it. Um, and then lastly, snow day, um, we can set it up for snow day so that way there somebody has to swipe in before the doors, all the doors will open and keep it running. Um, you get a histogram at the bottom to kind of show you a layout of where individual ones are and what your general concept looks like. Um, then at the very bottom, you have what access levels have this, as well as what doors have this. Customizable, I assume. So the holiday mask makes sense, but like for example, today we have it's a PD day, so we have no students in buildings. So we can customize that, add those dates in there, as well as a normal holiday schedule. But we've got this day, so the door should be locked today because no no students. Right, <coughs> and, and for that, I would create a I would create a holiday for that ahead of time, mm -hmm. and then that way there it'll take and box them up. Because you can create a, I'm sure, um, take some, I'm guessing you guys knew that today was going to be a special day, probably before the school year even began. Mm -hmm. So somebody can come in and put in all those holidays ahead of time. And then that way there, the system will run as you expect it to. So we would just call it a holiday, is, is what we say. So what I would do is I would go into our holiday scheduling. Right. And I would just type in, if it's active, would you say it was PE day? It's a PD, PD. Uh, LPD. professional development, yeah. And I mean, it happens multiple days throughout the year. So we, we have the current, our current system allows us to, to look at a, a calendar essentially, click on the appropriate days for that and then okay. apply it. And that's just our, okay. th those are the days that we're going to be closed, if you will, until yeah. the doors don't open. They don't operate on that normal schedule. Sure. You'd end up coming in and just doing it across multiple days through here. Okay. Um, so not quite as efficient, but still, still doable. No, that's what I'm not creating. Am I doing one for every day, or can I can I select multiple days for if, if I said PD and it was the third Thursday of every every month, um, I could I could select that. It would be no. You'd end up having to do it for every day. For every day, okay. I'll have to take that one back to talk to the development about. Yeah. Um, let's see. And then one time schedule is going to be something that you only intend to use once, and it burns off the system. Uh, personnel. So we're going to be able to create your, our individual personnel for the system. Um, for, uh, for this, um, all this information is being written into the, the SQL database, even the picture. Uh, we're converting it to a blob and writing it into the database as well. So when you do a database backup, you're also backing up all your pictures. Um, it's not sitting on a font in a folder on the desktop of the machine. And when the machine fails, now we don't have any pictures. Um, pretty straightforward. <coughs> First name, last name. Uh, uh, card number, department, PIN, if you guys use PINs, 
You can also use the arrows at the end to take and generate a randomly generated number. Um, activate date. So when should this card go active? If you guys want to give cards to plumbers that are coming in to do some work, uh, you can hand them a card on Friday and say, hey, Monday morning, 9 a.m., these cards will start working. Um, expiration type uh, date, you can say, hey, Friday, 5 o'clock, these cards won't work anymore. Uh, so when they inevitably leave with them and take them home, you don't have to worry about them still working. Uh, personnel groups, we can create groups with common access. Um, actually, I'll talk about that next. Um, but you can choose what specific access levels a, a specific group should have, um, be able to check it once. So all your janitorial staff, uh, you can just create a personnel group and add them to it. Um, access levels and then sites are the individual sites like we talked about earlier with individual schools being create one for your high school, middle school, and what sites should they have access to. Uh, and then down at the bottom under more details. Uh, we, do, we do allow you to do some role-based rules so you can create a rule that says uh, this person is an administrator. If an administrator swipes in, the system should do this. Um, and then uh, use limit, if you want to create a number of uses, uh, also the ADA checkbox, um, a whole host of other information is listed here. There's also 16 custom fields inside the database. If there's something that's listed that isn't listed here that you would like to add, uh, the Coke vendor's contract bit number. We can create a specific field for that. It's also saved inside the database. Groups through Active Directory uh, integration. We can, thing. we can bring people into ED, yes. Okay, so we have that. We have those groups separated out through different OUs and everything. They'll just sync over? They would. So yeah. access to Windsor High School is a certain group of people that is just automatic. Yeah, and what they would do is, is when you import them through AD, um, you, again, you would use the monitor. You go onto the server and do it through the actual application in MonitorCast. Um, it would show up here. Uh, you get a list here that said, um, I think it says AD slash, and then what the group is, and then what personnel are in it. And, um, I'm sorry, not here. It would personnel over here to say that they're in that group. Um, and then over here are all the access levels. You can choose which access levels they should have. Um, we can also take with AD and use their login to actually log them into the system as well. So we can, we can take and put that in here as well. For, for individual users to say they have access. For sure. And that's a customizable dashboard then they could have access to yes, through AD credentials. Okay, great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, for administrators, um, here's where we can create those users uh, that we were just talking about. Uh, we can come in and uh, you can input their names, information if you want to create them manually. Uh, when you go through and set up AD in the Active Direct uh, Monitor Cast server, that's, you'll get a button up here that says AD Sync. Uh, we can also synchronize the card holders with the AD server. So if you hire a new person, it'll import them. If for some reason somebody gets fired, it'll take them out of the system as well. Um, I believe that is set right now to once a day, but you can also dial that back if you need it. Um, and then to take and specify what somebody should be able to see and should be able to see, uh, we have check boxes to give you the gross features for it. And then if you click on the headers, they get the individual call-outs for the individual sub-pieces. So if this person, if I didn't want them to have access to unlock, schedule, block, I would just change these to no access, save it, and when that person logs in, those buttons don't appear. Um, if they don't have access to the entirety of a thing, then the buttons don't appear at the top line. So they don't even know that those things are there. Uh, for rules, I'll give you a So for rules for the system, we give you a, a whole host of different ways that we can take and uh, do, make the system do things. Uh, we break it down to two different types, hardware-based rules and uh, server-based rules. Uh, so hard, hardware-based rules are ones that are gonna be saved right onto the controller. Um, if for some reason the server goes down, the rules will still keep functioning because they're on those individual controllers. Uh, so you're looking at things like uh, a Rex rule. If a Rex is triggered, what should happen? Uh, maybe policy says if a Rex is triggered, I also wanna take and maybe turn on the sounders uh, for it. Uh, monitor point rule, if you guys have panic buttons that are on the wall, one of these panic buttons gets pressed, this is what should happen based off of that. Um, the schedule, personnel rule, and then first card rule. Which happens here in, in Colorado a lot. That yeah. first card rule should happen. Since Colorado likes to close their schools off a little bit, so 
<laughs> Sorry, I'm from Utah, so I, I, I can throw it that way. You said they mentioned the word snow. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's the guy thinks it. No, so, so that allows your system not to unlock on the schedule. You, you know, that first person that has access then comes in and then activates the schedule and opens up all the doors that are supposed to be. So like on a snow day or a late start day, nobody's there yet, the building's still secure, and then that person shows up, boom, whoosh, unlocks and runs into the schedule. So. How's that work with, we could have a snow day and want the door to the building to stay locked, but have custodial there still plowing and shoveling sidewalks, and if they need to run in and use the restroom. Um, you would apply it to specific Okay. So custodial staff, the, the door would just stay in the Locked card or pin state <coughs> if an administrator comes in. Maybe you say principals. Principals, assistant principals, if they swipe in on any exterior reader, then go ahead and yeah. keep So it that's selectable, sorry. Okay. okay. <coughs> um, and then at the bottom we have server-based rules. So these are ones that are going to be controlled by the server. So if the server goes offline, these rules won't work. Um, but you can see things like uh, three-swipe override um, is oddly a popular one. Um, you can present your badge three times to any reader or any specified reader and affect other downstream readers. Um, in universe, I've worked with a couple of universities, professors come up, present their badge three times to their office reader, it unlocks their office, unlocks their classroom. Uh, end of the day, they come out, they present it six times, the first three unlocks it, the second three would take and relock it. Um, so if he leaves early, he can lock his whole system. Or is he also used as a duress? Uh, yeah, we can, can use it for duress as well. Dress. If they swipe it twice or yeah. swipe it three times, it yeah, puts the school in lockdown. Yeah. Or, or we can look at doing something like a keypad duress. Um, if somebody puts a gun, puts a gun in somebody's back and says, "Hey, I really need into the school," they can take and swipe, put in a specific key, uh, key code, and it gets them in. But it also sends an alert to the system to let them know it's going. Um, a sweet swipe, three swipe override. I've also used in some schools so that way their principals can take and just present their badge three times at the exterior reader and go ahead and unlock the school. Uh, so it's a it's a really cool feature to be able to take and be able to control those things. Um, email notifications are pretty straightforward. Um, and then keypad mask rules, you can mask it from the keypad as well. Um, they have an ask <coughs> Does anybody have any questions? Regarding the dashboard, mm -hmm. um, Canvas monitors, we're looking at having them monitor the access control systems at each individual school. Okay. Um, not to say the word idiot proof, but I will anyway. I'm um, not a big fan of idiot proof. Because right. as soon as you make it idiot proof, They'll build a better idea. Right. <laughs> so, okay, how about this? Uh, directional will be challenged. Yep. Um, like, <laughs> okay. If, if we have door access, so certain specific doors will like name doors like Jim North, Jim East. Uh, is there map integration into the dashboard? So if an alert comes up and on the map, it actually shows exactly where the alert is coming. There is uh, on the custom dashboard. Um, <clears throat> you can set up a map. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you can create a map, and then facility map. Um, and then I don't have any, but okay. you'll be able to take and put it out here. And then drop in oh, your school map. Yeah, they actually put the doors in where they are. Right. So, yeah. Okay. Where they are, and then they can check. And they actually will show green if they're locked, and then you know they, they're actually right. Right. They're colored, they're colored, colored, colored. Like, held open. Yep. Cool. Thank you. Or you can have a camera there too to right. record, show you what the issue is. Well, and then and then the other thing is that for VI, how we can tie these things together, uh, we can look at doing it one of two ways. Uh, for the maps, we can look at uh, opening up a facility map. Well, there's two. <laughs> um, so we can look at opening up a facility map, um, has your doors on it, for your access control stuff, um, and then down at the bottom is a kick out panel. Or if if any of these start flashing, they can click on the door itself. It opens up a panel at the bottom that talks about the door, tells you where it is, color gives you a diagram so you know what the colors are. What do you want to do with it? If somebody is, um, maybe you guys have an intercom system, somebody presses the button, you want it to come up, they can come in here and hit admit, and they can come through the door. If they have the right <coughs> If they have the right skill. Um, you can also see the information about the last time. Um, and then event history, and then from here you can also play back. If you have cameras looking at that door, you can also play back the, the associated video with it. Cool. Thank you. Um, and then the other way that you can take and do it that's more access control centric um, is to our access view. Um, this one you'll have a drop down. You can choose either all doors and track what's going on across all of your doors um, at once, or you can come in and do the specific door you're interested in. 
Um, you can see the camera that's associated with it, um, your different actions you can do with it, last entry, last alarm, and then all your event history. Um, these are also filterable. So if you want to go back and say, I'm trying to see a specific event that happened, maybe an access denied, or what happened when this door went into an alarm state because it was held open, I can take and do that through here and narrow it down to exactly what I want. Uh, play back the video, it pops up from the bottom in place for you. Um, that is our access control in a really, really quick fashion. <laughs> Um, it's, it's, it's great. I, I'm a big fan of the access control stuff. I think it does lots. Um, we've worked with some comp customers that wanted to integrate it into their bird panels. Um, so we'll do, if you guys wanted bird panel access, we'll do it off the of dry contact relays uh, for the most part. Um, there's a couple of pretty high speed Bosch panels out there that you can, I guess, yeah. signify yeah. zones yeah. and things. We do that in 47J. Yes, we do. And, uh, so. and, and those, uh, <laughs> so, um, so they integrate with their Bosch. I don't know what, what intrusion system you guys use here? We don't. You know, okay. So, so technically, you could use this as your intrusion yeah. system too, because of the new build that we just came out with, it will act as an intrusion sure. detection. So, any doors that you want to have monitored but not card access monitored, you can integrate those and make those as a you know a security system basically. Um, I always think security systems are a thing of the past. I have one in my house, but I only got it because I want to know when the kids, you know, the grandkids are running out the back door or the front door. You hear the ding dong, ding dong. That's all we, we care about. But, you know, security systems are more a reactive thing after the fact. It's already happened to where video and access control, you can actually see right. that whole thing of what's going on. Yes, you see this person coming through, but with the video, you can verify who that person is. That's why the tight integration that we have of doing all that stuff. And that's why I put it on my garage. So now each one of my kids have, and grandkids have their own code to log into my garage so I know what they took. And, <laughs> instead of just a generic code, you know, on your cart, on the garage, it's, Grandpa, what's, your, what's the code? And, you know, now now they've got their own code. Now I know, now I know who, oh, you didn't put the bike out. Oh, it was you. No, it was this one. Anyway. <laughs> All the great kids got their birthday. That's our code of my <laughs> So I know. Man, you just figured me out. <laughs> you can see all that on your phone. One 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 one. If you're the second kid, two two two. But it, you know, so the access control is very user friendly. We've designed it for the, really through a K twelve application, and and also grown from there. I mean, we have I have it in other locations that you know multiple properties and, and the, they manage multiple properties and all that so like a developer you know they have multiple properties they do that and that's that's in the proposal that we did we have one server that one server will communicate to all these back in there and then that aspect of it there now if you want a hardware and you want to spin it up in a vm atmosphere you can definitely we can remove the server we'll give you the specs that we i don't like they call them minimum specs i hate minimum specs don't build to the minimum we'll build a little harder than that but we can give you those if you want to put that into a VM app. If you're running VMs here, we can actually take the monitor cast and run it on a VM platform. Yeah, actually, both the, the video, the video yes. back end of the video and the back end of monitor cast are designed to run on the same machine. Yeah. So you don't have to worry about allocating two different yeah, VMs. Yeah, but when you've got multiple buildings, I like oh, to yeah. separate it in its own <coughs> server so they're not on the, you know, no single point of failure. I come out of that background. So. Oh, enrollment so, readers uh, for access control. Another thing we can do for uh, whoever it is that has to enroll people into the system, uh, we can take and specify a specific reader for as an enrollment reader. Um, and the next card that you swipe on that reader, it'll take and pull in the card format, also the, the pin number or the card number for it. Um, so that way they, they can just grab from the stack and swipe. They don't actually have to flip it over and read. Um, and then <coughs> a little bit of time. Badge for your software. Oh, badge. Oh, you know what? I didn't move that over. You didn't do that, did you? No, I didn't. But we do include also <coughs> badge, badge printing software. Badge printing software. Yeah, so if you guys you can print tool. your own, or I don't know if you guys print your own with late logos and things on it, or if you guys just use a generic white card and just hand it to people. Either way, uh, the badge printing software is there. It taps into the same database that we're writing to from here. You can search. You can do bulk prints. Uh, we can print on both sides. Um, as long as the printer is able to be seen by Windows as a printer, we can print. Um, or what I like to do is, is if you wanted to print it out on say OneNote, um, and then pass it around, and everybody can get the buy off on it. Everybody signs it. Yes, this is okay. And then we can start printing. And then that way, there, when somebody comes back and says, "I don't like this," and say, "Here's where you signed off on it." I'm going to ask a question. So, sure. you guys say emergency systems. Are you meaning that by your firearm system? No. 
um, one of the questions that we sent to you guys. So we're, we're looking at how this will all integrate together. So we're, we're doing this as access control. Um, we have a video piece and then a PA piece uh, that would be emergency alert. So that was my next question was going to be, how does this integrate with something? We, we have like a walkie talkies on certain personnel and everything like that. Is there a way that if a door is propped open that we can communicate with that? What does that look like if you can share a demo of that? Yeah, so I, when I when I hear emergencies, that's why I asked. Of course. What do you mean is emergency? You know, emergency alert systems. My I, my default back is to fire alarm, and all that stuff is really just by a dry contact into the system. Sure. So you can unlock all the doors, or you know, lock the system. Like we have a, you could have a button in a teacher's office if they have a threat. You know, they go up and hit a button or hit some type of interface by just a contact closure, and that's how access control really integrates is by contact closure. But we can. You know, I, or it would, a lot of it would probably depend on how that system, the walkie-talkie system, a PA system, would be able to ingest information. In. Sure. Um, we work with a couple of airports that they can receive an email. That email has specific formatted information. It pulls that information out and then parses it into the PA system and it spits it out over the loudspeaker. Um, if the walkie-talkie system could do something similar, then we could maybe use something like that. Uh, without knowing the exact how it all works, I could use I give you a couple of ideas. Safe schools? Yeah, we do that at 27J. It integrates through the Bogan system okay. and then pulls this in. Okay. Yeah. But, but for me, myself, as the product engineer, when you have a question like that, you mm -hmm. submit that to them. They ask Tad. Mm -hmm. Tad gives it to me, and then I beat my head against it until I make it work. <laughs> so that's, that is what my job is. No, good. So, um, so, yeah, to, to figure out. It's questions. always different, you know, emergency systems. It's everybody's different. Yeah. Them. So that's why I asked that. And, sure. And we can make it integrate, you know. It just we just have to figure out how it kicks out and um, see what else was what else that didn't answer. I think I got a hand. I think I got a good bit of them. I think other than those last two about what do I see in the future and how does it integrate into the future, I think were the only two that I didn't hit. Yeah, the yeah. looks in the next three years, okay. um, and then how's our system switch? I mean, we're always making it more more user friendly, yeah. more yeah. more key features. Yeah, and if you would have ideas, if you, again, if you get them to to, to take. Uh, Tanya. 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 Yeah. And Tad, they can get them over to the development. Well, the nice thing is, is we're here. Isn't it A? It's A. It's an A. Yeah. I know. My parents thought of that. Yeah. It's called It's just like a Utah thing, you know. Like we call it Tooele, Tooele, but yeah. you know, Tule. Uh, but uh, but. We're, we're pretty flexible as far as the features in development, looking at them, trying to figure out if there's something that we can take and get in. Um, yeah, a good 99% of the development happens in Houston. Uh, we have some guys over in Vietnam that are part of our company that also do some of the development work as well. But there are people, they're not a third party company um, that's out there. Yeah, we are global. And, you know, our main headquarters for ICRO is out of Japan. Everything comes out of Japan as a, from a camera manufacturing side of it. but. Um, but for the access control, we were born and bred out of Houston, Texas, yep. and everything is done out of there. And then we have other divisions across the world that we pull from their resources to help. Because, oh yeah, we, we've got time, we can help you build this part, build that part. Um, and then as far as where I see access control going in the next three years, I think you're gonna see a lot more integration with AI-specific things. And I also think you'll see biometrics becoming a really, really big player. I think you're gonna see people try to really walk a fine line between security and convenience. What, much like we do now with computers. You know, we, we do things like Microsoft Hello, where they can scan my face and say, Mike Redding, log in. We're gonna, I think you're gonna see more towards those kinds of things where we move into convenience while still trying to maintain some of that security aspect. Because as you make it more convenient, generally you see that it's less secure. Um, so. Um, it's, it is, it's, I think it's gonna be a fine line to walk. And then with AI capabilities, um, like we have with our Active Guard system, where we can take our cameras and put AI stuff on them, I think you're gonna see a layering of those things together where um, you're gonna see where we're gonna be using, say, face detection plus a card swipe to get you through a door. Or um, if you get the HID fingerprint reader and you put your fingerprint on there, you have to have the biometrics and a card. Um, I think people are getting 
smarter with card technologies and being able to circumvent them that we're, you're going to start seeing more and more of adding that second layer of something else. Much better the, mobile credential. Yeah. I mean, that's, you know, well, that that's, was one that that's a start. Yeah, the mobile yeah, credentials is a, it's a, an infancy thing. Yeah. I mean, it's growing. And, and there is, you know, you have HIG, they have theirs, and that, that works there, and we work with that. And then there's others that do it too. Um, like I said, that's a, you're going to see that get much more yeah. user friendly. Yeah, right now it's kind of I think it's kind of cumbersome on some of the you know I know HIDs is kind of cumbersome but yeah. um, you're going to see those things change and but the whole thing is, is the facial recognition and walking up you know hands free right this is what that's what it's going to come down to is a convenience is where access control is but still like you said layer of security um, I mean, we can still do that today but we you know we can do a facial and then but you still have to have that second credential on that it's not best practices until we come out with our next camera. Yeah. So the, the face can't override the system? No, we don't not, recommend not it. Yet. Oh, I, okay, we, we can. can. I've made it work. We can. We don't recommend you well, doing it. We don't it. recommend yeah. it. Because I could, put a, I could print out a piece of paper with your face on it and just hold it up to the, to the sensor and it says, yeah. hey, <laughs> and let you in. So. Well, because that's basing it off of points of your face instead of your actual right. face. Right. Okay. Yeah. How we're decomposing it down. Um, and then, um, oh, for the HID reader question that was on it for a moment, if the reader supports it, we'll support it on the back end. So with, for the mobile credential from, the, I'll use HID because that's the one most people <clears throat> are uh, talking about. When you scan it on the reader, the reader just says, that's card number one, two, three, four, five, and sends it back to the controller. That's all. Um, so we, we can't support that. Yeah, as long as it's OSTP protocol, or <coughs> yeah. we can the protocol, we, yeah. we can get it's it. all the credentials yeah. on the card reader. And then, Secure door hardware. Um, you can go really crazy. And I'm not. We're not a door hardware company. I mean, we do integrate with Schlage and Fondue Prune and yeah. all their stuffs out there. So I mean, it can get pretty crazy. It's just you know how crazy. You, I always put it if, the, if there's a will, there's a way. You know, and kids are the worst. And then the worst thing than kids are homeless people. You know, they're the smartest people how to get into a system. But so. The best thing that we've come up to is, you know, integration with video. It gives you that extra, and use that extra layer there. Um, there is some locks out there, you know. I'd say the most secure thing is a mat lock, but then it's power intensive, it's, you know, more expensive and all that stuff. And then you can get integrated lock, you know, integrated door DPSs in them. So, you know, kids look in the door jam for the door sensor, right? And that's how they override it or do whatever. Or even the, if the lock is all integrated into one lock, they can push the thing in override it that way so I mean there's some ways that you can get around it you know you can double put door sensors in time in series they only see the one but they don't see the other one or there's hidden locks I mean there's a plethora of different stuff in there so it's really based on budget it's that's what it's really going to come down to and then what you guys feel is secure enough hopefully that answers that question um, yeah and then Schlage makes uh, Von 2 print crash bar also um, for dog laying for the key Mm -hmm. yeah, you, do you guys have a problem with like janitors forgetting to undog leg your doors every once mm -hmm. in a while? I haven't okay. seen it. I guess are like I think it would the best school district be, ever. <laughs> yeah, it would probably be more like the uh, who opens up the school in the morning. Okay, the day lead, we'll we'll see something like that. Okay. Well, so what the what they have, what Schlage has, is one that'll automatically do it. So you can set it on a mm -hmm. timer, and the first person to push it, it, it collapses a crash bar, and holds it, and then at a certain time it leaks. Mm -hmm. So well, we have that uh, like. Buttons that they do at the school. Yeah. Like that. So, right. or if that's something you have, uh, we're here just to help you guys with your questions. If you if you if you and wondering how the system works, or want to try it, um, if you want to try it, the system is a you can download a demo version. Actually, you can download the software and run it in demo mode. Uh, give you sixty doors for one hundred eighty <coughs> days, so you guys can play test it. Um, if you wanted to try moving forward with it, we could look at taking a, a building or a couple of doors and just moving it over to it, um, and then. Probably myself or um, my boss Mel would come out and probably assist on that. One other question. Which sure. is, I know we kind of touched on it a little bit. Is what is the replacement cycle for electronics? Uh, yeah, for the replacement cycle for electronics, most of the time it's not until it starts giving you a problem. Um, especially now with getting some pieces is really, really difficult to do. Um, trying to forecast that out, you'd have to know six months a year in advance to order it in order to probably get it in your hands when you want it. Um, the, most of the time on the boards, the relays are what you'll probably see, um, and that's only if you use them a lot. 
Um, they're designed to last you for but that's why a we, very long time. That's why we, you know, you get your accent, you know, you get your LP boards. I don't know how you guys have it now. You got LP 1501s. Mm -hmm. And are they controlling the door directly or are they going through a power supply? They're controlling the door directly. Okay. So that puts more work on the controller part of it. So the way we proposed it is you got the LP 1501 with a life safety power supply, and that has all the relays and that does it. So the controller tells the life safety power supply to then do that, and then that's a lifetime warranty. So if that goes down, you contact life safety, they replace it there. So it doesn't affect, doesn't put a lot of work on the LP 1501 or you know the controller board because mm -hmm. those relays can only handle so much. You know, if you're trying to run 15 amps through a relay, you'll blow the relay up, you know, in six months or whatever, depending on traffic. But that's what those power supplies are really designed for, is to handle that workload. So you go from the LP 1501 to a controller uh, power supply with relays, and then all your doors plug into that power supply. So it saves. That's the longevity. You know, I see access. I, I go into some sites and I'm looking like I'm like, how long have you had this access control? And they say, thirty years. <clears throat> you know, and they, you can go open up, a, you know, and they got this much dust on it, but it still just keeps on working. Mm -hmm. If it's done correctly and designed right, it will. The components that side of it, power supplies, you know, all that stuff that does the workhorse stuff will, will, will wear out eventually, mm -hmm. and it's based on use really, sure. just finding good quality product. Hopefully that answered that. Let's see what else. I think that's about it. Okay. Unless I missed something myself. Mike, talk to me about so the the I like the ability to scan a card, but if I want to manually enter cards, can I I could do that too? I assume. Yeah, right. Yeah, okay. Right here, you can you can take and put in your first name, last name. You can hand type in the card number if you wanted, right. um, and then department pin any of the information you wanted. Yeah. Um, if you scan a card, maybe you get a brand new sleeve of cards, mm -hmm. and the card format is different. Um, you can either come in through a uh, hardware and card format and manually type it in, um, or if you swipe it on the reader, um, you can come up to the dashboard and see if maybe one of my, the ones from the office will see if that'll do it. That card. So if I swipe a card that's not in the system, I can also click here on this plus and it'll bring me to the personnel page and pull this over. Uh, oh, I don't have another card. Click on, show me that. Click on that. Sure. So if I. And it pulled over the, the mm -hmm. card number automatically, and I could just start typing. Okay. So if you use the if you use the enrollment reader, you can just stay all on this one page. Um, if you use the uh, if you use it where you swipe and it's on the dashboard, it's there. Mm -hmm. Is there a mobile application to access MonitorCast itself? Uh, so you can. We do have a mobile app. Um, it's only based on iOS at the moment. Uh, you also have to have the iOS requires us to have a <laughs> SSL cert on it as well. It's a, it's a, um, we also have an API for it. Um, that's really what the um, the mobile app runs off of. Um, through the VI side of things, we have an Android and an iOS app, and you can do access control as far as admit, uh, lock, unlock, and all those things through the mobile app. Okay. <coughs> What about sharing with local police if you wanted to give them access to things? Well, that's on the video side. Oh, yeah. Or that's well, on the next door. Well, All of our local <laughs> law enforcement officers have cards for our system. Oh, yeah. And they so, just add them. Yeah, you yeah. just add them in and they have what permissions or what buildings are. Yeah. Uh, oh, reporting. I skipped right over reporting. So, reporting, um, we give you a whole host of different ways you can pull information out of the system. Um, area reports, if you generate areas, you can see who's in an area. Uh, I'm sorry, that's live area monitoring. Uh, area of report, you can actually see what's going on in an area. Uh, link is something specific to Ultronics, looking at uh, what the hardware bits are actually doing, well, how much charges on the batteries, what percentages are left. Uh, personnel reports, what has a person done? Uh, so if you're wondering, you know, Mike Redding, you know, we thought we saw you here really late, we looked on video, your car's here, we went back and looked, and over the past month, you've come in 10 o'clock at night, three nights a month. That's not when you're supposed to be here, what's going on? Um, so you can look at personnel reports for that. Um, the big one that I, I use is Report Monitor, uh, Report Manager, because uh, this kind of gives you the best of everything. Um, left hand side, you can pare down all your different filter criteria. Um, if you have a specific filter that you saved, what date are you interested in, specific events across specific readers. Um, again, if you think somebody's trying to penetrate a specific reader, you can narrow it down to that specific reader. Show me all the all the access denies that have come across this reader in the you know in the last month. 
Um, you can do down to devices, controllers, sites, um, and then personnel and personnel groups as well. Um, it'll narrow it down here, and then up at the top we can do it either as a PDF or as Excel. Um, we also can create a rule where you can do all this and then send it on whatever frequency you like. Um, if you're a person who likes getting a rule up every Monday morning of what happened up the last, the previous week, we can send it. Any other questions? Concerns? Time? Nice. What's that? You did. I did? Nice. You can give them back some time. As, as we always say on our I'm not a big fan of saying that. <laughs> You're not giving me back time. Right now. <laughs> All right, gents. Yeah, if you guys have any questions, please get them over to them and, or to Tad, and they can.